All right, so once again, I'm discussing patch structure. You know, a lot of Class A surfacing people, how, what they will do is just simply look at the surface layout or the patch structure of an object, and they'll determine if they think that the surface data is good or bad based on that layout. If the layout looks strange and not typical of what a Class A layout would look like, it really attracts a Class A person's attention, and they, they wonder how continuity is gained and how, how things work. So I look at this scan data, and I immediately start coming up in my mind with, with ways to approximate this shape. Okay, Now other, other people do the same thing. So I just want to point out a couple differences of maybe, so here's a, let's say this is a, a, a version that someone comes up with. Okay, so they lay it out like this. I immediately see this model and I think, okay, it looks pretty good, looks pretty good. This immediately attracts my attention because how did this, how did they keep this edge, right? How did they make that an edge and then get this, this, and that with the four sides? You would have some really skewed CVs in here. So when I look at these two surfaces, immediately I would see that and say, mm, no. It's going to be really hard to maintain continuity across here and make this look good. Okay, and then if we if we rotate this around and begin to examine these CVs a little bit, and with all that we've been talking about, um, you know, CV layout and all these things, we've got a really um, uh, some torqued CVs over here, right? These aren't laid out nicely, and when this control vertice right here is below these, so. Uh, I'll try a little bit different way to illustrate that. Um, I'm going to just try to isolate this one row so you can see it. So if we pick this row, okay, and then we look at that row from here, okay, I know that that row right there, this surface must be coming out this way at the end. And what do I mean by out that way? Well, if we just use a couple, couple quick um, drawing tools right here, what I mean is, if I drew a curve through here, it would connect this point, this point, this point, and that point. That's a negative. Okay. When you see that in CVs, that means that the surface lying underneath here is coming around, around, it's crowned, it's crowned. But then at the end, it has to do that because this is the tangency, that right there. So this surface has to be matching that tangency angle. It, it doesn't have a choice, right? That surface is telling it to do that. And then as we move back here, this one's positive, right? There is no negative at this point. So all of these, you know, and this is how you can begin to analyze your surfaces, right? All of, if we look at one row at a time, right? So if we look at this first hull, so I'm just going to go into pick hull. This hull, Pretty much they're all crowned, right? We roll over to the next hull, pretty much all of these are positive. We roll to the next hull, these, all positive. We roll to this hull, and now we start to get into a little bit of craziness, right? That row now is not, and we see some weird spacing. We come to this row, and when I look at this now, I see a low spot going from here to here. It goes down and then back up, okay? And that, that's the kind of stuff that a Class A person will look at immediately and determine if this model is good or bad. Not by shading, by that. Because we can shade this and it probably looks um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's got continuity across there. If we checked it, let's check it for curvature. Okay, so we do have some curvature issues in here. So that, that's not that good. But when we look at it, though, it seems to highlight pretty good. That's when we need to start discussing what do these highlights mean, okay? So if we just put this type of, of, of quick analysis on here and I look at this and I'm going to use my, um, my non-proportional scaling and I'm going to stretch this out. What I see is, is a smooth, I see a lot of hook right here, which is a bit strange. By hook, this really wraps rapidly this way. That's where that negative, I think, is coming in, a real tight curvature. So we have a nice S shape here, though. Then we have an S and it kind of flattens out and it gets a little bobble. Then we have a bobble and we have some things going on in here. So it's curvature, but it's not quite how we would want it, okay? And I would, I would have to, as a concept model, I, I see what this might be. 
But I would really have to understand if the, if the designer of this wanted this section to have this much shape in it. Okay? So how, what's another way to check that? Well, I might cut some radial sections. So we'll do new radial. Okay? I'm just going to pick this edge. And you pick a few and it will, it will drop off some, some planes so we can, we can check this out. Okay? Then let's pick these surfaces and cut those and cut those radial sections. All right. And now let's look at those radial sections from this way. And let's do our non-proportional scale view. Okay. See how I could tell that this surface had negative in it without ever analyzing it, just by looking at those control vertices. See how that's a negative? Now, I see this is positive. Okay. I see this up here as positive, but all of a sudden it's got negative. That's not typically how forms would develop, right? You don't just have a little negative appear in the middle of space. So I think that that, in my, in my perspective, that's just a, a little mistake in the surface from trying to be fast, okay? From trying to quickly surface this. So what's another way, what's another way to look at this? Well, I, I really like the way this person laid the back out, okay? You've got a surface right here. You know, while we do have some distortion in the CVs, it's a nice extrusion, okay? And then what do we do? Then we build a transitional surface that keeps things radial, okay? That's nice. That's what I think we should have done up here. So from the onset, if I was surfacing this, right, I would immediately looked at this and, and said to myself, okay, I see what we have here. Paint. Let me put a few lines down just so I see where I'm going. Okay. I know I'm going to have a section at the top of my wheel arch. I know this is one of my control lines. Here's another control line. Okay. I know this is a nice shape that I want to maintain right here down to the front. Okay, We've got a section then like this. Well, that's going to fill in nicely right there. So what I want to do is I want to make this section sweep this way. Okay. So maybe I do only sweep it to that point, but then I'm going to build this surface, okay? So, so the underlier for this area, I'm just going to extrude this out and connect it up underneath here, okay? This will all be in space and not used, all right? And then to put my transition in and get back onto surface, I would come back and I would say, okay, my transition ends about like that. And now I can control with this transitional surface and with this transitional surface, my continuity. This may have to be two. This may have to be two, just because we're working to a curve on surface along these edges. And I can show you what that would look like, right? Because when I laid this set of surfaces out, I made it like this, okay? So if we, if we take the scan data and we overlay it, this is how I laid my surfaces out, okay? You can see how I controlled and I don't, it's not going underneath. So now these two surfaces are all positive, okay? So even if they have maybe a touch of negative, it's controlled, but I'm pretty sure these are all close to positive, all right? And again, even if they have a little negative, it's controlled, and I could always get rid of it if I wanted, right? By making these all positive. I was trying to stick close to the scan, but this surface structure is going to give you a lot better chance to get good continuity and, and things like that. So if we look at now this, these black and white bars, and we'll go here to the side view. Oops, we must have this. That looks a bit strange. Maybe I'll do a reset view because something's quite peculiar here. Yeah, there. Now, now the shading's right. Sorry. So now we have a nice arc arc, 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 and then we get down here to where it kind of got a little bit of an S. And it's very controlled as it goes across there. Okay, that's a nice patch structure. So even if the highlights aren't perfect or things are, are not you know working perfect in this surface layout, a class A surfacing person is gonna see this layout immediately be um, uh, be attracted or, or, or want to investigate this and see how this worked. And if you surfaced it simply like this, 
they would say, oh, this is probably okay. I can work with this. I can modify it. All right. So let's have a let's have a go at, at trying to re to to re topologize this, and I'll show you some tools for doing that. Okay.